What's growing on? My uh, guide Renee has really taken me to every hot spot here in uh, Pensacola and we are at another food forest and this one looks quite serious. This is probably the, the biggest one we've been to yet and Charles is going to show us around here in a second. Most of this is blueberries. I do have a row of blueberries here that I'm, uh, I'm gonna have to uh, probably move because this is gonna become a dedicated, what I call short cycle bananas. Those are bananas that can freeze back, put up a pea stem and fruit all in one year. Dwarfs. They're not all dwarfs. Really? There are some that are just uh, genetically disposed to do that. There's a uh, Dr. Greg, Fonish, University of Georgia, Tifton, Georgia. He has done a lot of tests on them. And uh, he started out with about 80 varieties. He's got that down to probably about 40 or 50 now. But I've been up there twice, three years apart, where I've seen yellow bananas hanging in August. That's impressive. Yeah, wow. very impressive. So they, they started to release some of these names? Uh, he is primarily an economic horticulturist he studies the economics of plants and so he's not trying to release these he was just doing it as is this a crop feasible to be grown in Georgia so he's finding the ones that are best okay yeah. so and uh, he's allowed me to get some of those I've got several of them that I'll be trialing so they're not like the new FIA varieties which that Goldfinger that is one of the FIAs right yeah it yeah. should be yeah uh, okay I don't really I've probably forgotten more about these things because Bananas up here are iffy. You're pushing it. If you have a mild winter, you're gonna do pretty good. We had a fairly mild winter. And I think with the exception of the squirrels, I'd have had much bigger hands of bananas. Now, here is the exception. Step right in there and look at that. Whoa, we got a rat cutting in here. That's pretty nice. What is this, Raja Puri? We believe that's a dwarf cabinet. Uh, blueberries are pretty much indestructible here. You just got to fertilize them and you got to have them heavily mulched. You see I've got a little bit of a weed problem here that cropped up over the last couple of years. Uh, that's Florida Betty. I was going to say, very, that's that rattlesnake root, right? Very, very, very invasive. We have weeded this seven or eight times this year. I don't use any herbicides. I don't use any fungicides. I try to I'm not saying I'm organic, but I try to do organic principles as best as, as I close can to as possible when I can. Um, I take a unique approach to irrigation. You can see that some huge pipes. I mean, you got some serious overhead yep. here, huh? I'll demonstrate that when we get over on the other side. But it's like a light rain uh, when it's falling. And what I want to do is I would like to use those once a week to rinse the foliage. You can't see it, but I've got irrigation pipes going subsurface there that uh, that I'm going to put heads on to let it uh, do the, the root bottom, water, irrigation, yeah, yeah. bottom irrigation. So, But we had a good crop of, uh, of blueberries. Austin is probably my favorite. Do you it, use this for frost protection also? The water? Or I can. Not, you can, okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, this is an Orinoco, we believe, and it had a bunch uh, and I left it hanging for a long time just to show people what happens is what happens is you get a, a, a cold hardy banana and with the exception of maybe one or two days in the winter time it's fine but then you get that 26 28 degree and it doesn't kill it it damages the outer sheath bananas are nothing more than layered leaves that's what the pea stem is it's layered leaves it's not a trunk it's a, they call it a pea stem. But as these leaves layer, they build strength. If you lose a couple of outer layers and then it fruits and gets a bunch on there, you have a weak point. And that's where that banana is gonna break and fall. 
and that's what happened in the, the bunch that come out this year it broke and, fought and fell um, and I've got one over here that you can clearly see what's happened to it that was the weak point oh yeah right there and you can tell all that outer is brown that's, that's not normal it should be nice and green but that's winter damage and then you can see the bunch that's hanging there this uh, is the Orinoco again we believe this is an Orinoco okay uh, well I started out with four or five varieties and then we found out a lot of them because they were you know, well of course it doesn't matter if you buy it from a store you're in, you may or may not get what you think you're getting. You don't know what you're getting, yeah. So, but we believe this is an Orinoco. It kind of has the characteristics of the Orinoco. It has had uh, five uh, pea stems fruit in this map. Wow. Um, Over the years? No, this year. Just this year you had this five? Year, yeah. That's impressive the, for a tall the banana. Other, the other three were uh, puny. They only had a couple of hands. And this one's not really anything to you know great to speak of I mean it looks like a one two three four hands a little there. better yeah uh, but they're they're decent size and and I like them you know people say that oh this is horse donkey burrow food you know but they have a uh, a unique texture and a unique taste uh, if you let it ripen properly it has to get ugly real I, ugly I agree ugly to where you think you should be throwing it away and then when you when you peel it the inside is nice creamy uh, it to me I pick up a berry taste with a lemon finish nice uh, but I'm taking this whole mat out because again it's a tall banana I want to get away from the tall bananas I want to get to the smaller bananas sort of bananas uh, also it's <laughs> it's overgrowing my Meyer lemon citrus wow uh, and you can see again the squirrels decimated it tearing it up i thought that was the hurricane when i pulled up those are squirrels eating banana leaves wow the uh the storm we had that come through here wasn't really bad it shredded a few of the leaves you know but the bananas aren't really hurt when their leaves get shredded they're a tropical plant they're used to tropical storms so it doesn't really hurt them they're it's okay that's their defense mechanism to keep from blowing over to shred the leaves so it doesn't make it as uh, attractive yeah but I tried pomegranates. I had a pomegranate growing there. I think it was the uh, Red Angel variety. Just doesn't do good here. I had a wonderful, that's the, the the stump of it right there. It's not wonderful in Florida. I've never done wonderful with that one either. So. It does really good in California. Okay. I, so, I thought uh, you needed more chill hours or something, but no, that's not it. This is some happy looking citrus. It is, but again, we've got weather anomaly. It has, um, they look beautiful. If you was in a store, you'd say, man, I want to buy that. Yeah. But the flavor is just not there this year. Last year, really great flavor. This year it's watered down. Too much um, water, there's a lot of rain this summer. Tons of rain. We, we've had over, uh, over 85 inches of rain this year. That's a lot for wow. anywhere. Um, but the average is in the 50s, that's, that's up there. Wow. Um, that's a ghost pepper. That, uh, this is the ghost? Yeah, my Ooh. son planted that in uh, 2014. And uh, <laughs> it did not die last winter. I mean, it, wow. it, it came back. So we got another Meyer lemon there. Uh, interesting story. Uh, in late August of 2014, we went on a vacation out of town. We come back and found truck tracks backed up in there and they had stripped the entire plant. Well, in that time it was all green and we think they were, thought they were stealing limes. Oh gosh. <laughs> so they stole immature Meyer lemons. <laughs> I've got a lot of pruning I've got to do to get control of this. Uh, you see it's just loaded with fruit, but- Weighing itself down, weighing yeah. Weighing itself down. I think I've got 15 varieties of muscadine. Of course, none of those are blooming or in fruit right now. What you're seeing now is I've already done my late summer prune after that where I come in here and just trimmed everything back and come through the middle. But uh, a lot of this is just, just old stuff. When I get through trimming this in late February, March, all you'll have left are these little pieces here. The main the, leaders, yeah. The little spurs that come out, they'll be trimmed all back. And again, you can see the overhead irrigation. 
Uh, we'll turn that on in just a little bit. You can also see down here, I've got... Oh, drippers too? Yeah. Wow. So. Did you get a pretty good muscadine harvest this year? Nope. No. Just... Noth nothing was great this year. Nothing was great this year. It was... Um... Did you prune them last year? Yes. You did, and you still I, didn't. Well, I got a late prune, though. Okay. I didn't quite get it done as soon as I should have got done. Uh, uh, this year, now that I'm retired, I'm committing to getting stuff pruned on time and see, see what will happen. This is probably the best citrus that I grow as far as dependability. Uh, that is a Phenicidia clementine. It has uh, the best taste, uh, most reliable. Uh, I pruned it really hard last year and I didn't even think I was gonna get much, but you can tell there's quite a bit of fruit there, probably more than there should be. Uh, I should have taken some of this off, just didn't have the time. I think that one, I think that's the Decapon. Yeah, that's a Decapon. Uh, there's, a, there's another name for it, a Sherinu or something like that. This is where you learn from my mistakes, okay? Okay. Uh, there used to be a, a form, citrus form, and it's not active anymore. But everybody's talking about how wonderful this, how great it tastes, it's fantastic. These are people that live north of me, much more north of me. So I says, well, if they're growing it, it must be great, okay? So I bought one, planted it, and then I come to find out it doesn't ripen until January through March. So the chances of me getting a ripe fruit off that are slim. Some years I will, some years I won't. But that's a mistake you shouldn't make. Just because everybody else loves it doesn't mean it'll grow where you live. <laughs> now, if you come right here, you can see a really nice hand. I see that. That's Saba. That is Saba, wow. At least we believe it is. I've come to find out nothing is etched in stone anymore. But we believe that Saba because it has produced some trunks that were probably 18, 22 inches in diameter. You know, with it. That one's not quite that big. It's actually got two hands on it. Two with that. It, had a, it, it produced three this year. It produced what come out early, early, early was a pea stem that had no leaves. They just pushed the bloom because all the leaves died from the previous year. And then this one is a recent one. You like this one eating out of hand or is it more of a plantain? This is a eat out of hand. It is the, oh wow, you got ripe bananas. Yeah, there's a few. There's, they're not yeah. quite ripe. These like to split about the time they get ripe. So it's, it'd be nice to have them lower to the ground. But, uh, so you can pick them off individually. Here's another uh, rack. And, okay, back up just a little That is Sweetheart. That's one of the varieties yes. I got from Dr. Fonish. Okay. There may be other bananas called Sweetheart, but the ones that he got, he has collected all over the world. A lot come from Africa, where he's from. So just because it's Sweetheart, what they call Sweetheart, may not be Sweetheart over here. It's a common name. But that plant right there will pup next spring, should produce a pea stem and have them flower about this height. Wow. And that's why I'm getting rid of this mat used to come all the way out here. I pulled out probably 50 to 100 pea stems out of here. I left it because that big one over there, I thought surely would bloom quickly. It did not. And, but yet this is one that come up pretty much this year. I see you removed the flowers. You think that's getting them to pump up a little quicker or just? You know, I like trying. flowers. Uh, I like to watch them because it distracts bees too. Yeah. Um, but this late in the year, I'm going to clip them. I want to get every edge I can. And from looking at this, they're, they're fairly plump. They're not too bad. I, will, I think I'll be able to cut this and take it in and get, get bright bananas off of it. Now this is a uh, next tree here we'll show you. Most people don't believe you can grow them here and you can't without some effort. This is an avocado tree. Ooh, Brogdon? Nope, it's a Mexicola. Mexicola, really? In 2014, it was cut to the ground. However, uh, avocado trees are very hard to root. So you can safely bury the grass six, eight, 10 inches deep. And then if it, if it is covered and it freezes down to the ground, what's gonna come up is not gonna be your rootstock. 
it's going to be your, your tree. And that's what happened here. So in 2014, this was killed to the ground and it's come back up. We did get a couple bananas, or not bananas, avocados off of it that were, were tasty. They're small, they're some Mexican, so they're, they're thin skin, they turn black. Um, and it's got a high oil content. Uh, it's a good little avocado. Nice. So, and it, if the trunk, the trunk at that size, three, three and a half inches, is almost freeze proof. Uh, when it gets up to four to five inches, you just about guarantee that it's freeze proof, unless you get something really strange, and that's for this area. You a fig collector? Well, I'm working on it. Working on it, okay. Are you keeping them in pots for nematodes, or what's the uh, the pointing? Um, fences. Fences, okay. I don't, my fences are too close to my property. Okay. I need to, I wish I had another 10 acres of land here. I just don't <laughs> have all the land. Uh, yeah, th th there's quite a few figs here. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to figure out what fig does really good down here. Uh, this one, uh, somebody got my fig right there. It might have been this. Yeah, bird pecked out. This is a pretty good one. It's too late in the year, really, to be seeing any figs right now. But there's still a few of these trees that have got some of them on there. How many varieties do you have here? <laughs> I actually don't know, but it's somewhere between 40 and 60. On the figs alone? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So uh, there's not very many duplicates in here. And okay. then I've got some that's in ground also. Louisiana native black. Wow, I've never heard of half of these varieties. Scott's black. Yeah. LSU champ. This is a good one, the Black Bethlehem. You can see I've got some kind of a issue going on right there, so I need to come in here and do some pruning on these. But I've got so much stuff going on, I just don't have time to get it all done. So You got your hands full. That's a happy fig, wow. Yeah, it's too happy. Uh, this, time. This fig will grow six, seven, eight foot a year. In fact, that's probably closer to eight or nine foot. That's all growth from this year. Uh, I had cut a lot of this back with this right here. That's all new push growth. Wow. wow. The only reason I'm keeping this is tree is I think that this will be an excellent rootstock. It is so vigorous that it pushes really hard. So um, I've got some I just stuck down in some pots and a lot of them just took off and are growing. But I think that it will be really good because there are some some varieties of figs that people have a really hard time getting them for root. And I think that grafting them may be the solution to some of that. Uh, so nice. that, that's kind of my thoughts on that. Yeah. I've got more figs here. That's an LSU purple. That's an old school Celeste. This I purchased as a, uh, a, a strawberry and it turned out to be a black fig a very large wow. tasty black fig so i'm um i'm happy that i've got it i just don't know what it is and i'm propagating it because it is such a good fig you see i laid a bunch of weights on it down, yeah put some rocks on it all of those are new ones that are coming up so i'll have plenty of these i just won't know what they are this is another celeste it was supposed to be a lemon or a Marseille. Or how's, the, how's the flavor of the fig on this one? It's it's a, it's a Celeste, that's I, what I, I figured out. So it, it's... it's Middle of the road, yeah? Yeah. Okay. I, I'm thinking though, but you gotta remember, this is gonna be the next year, be the first year that I've got all this open sky. That was all oak tree. I remember Making, that, yeah. All this oh. was heavy shade, too much shade. That'll make a big difference. So uh, I will probably cut this whole tree back down to about this level. And I may use this as a, uh, a cocktail fig tree. I may put some of the better ones Graft on them on. Because nice. it's got tremendous root structure. Uh, so I, that's, that's probably you know, what I want to, want to do with that. And I've got three persimmon trees crammed in here way too tight. Fuyu, Seiju, and Makawajiro, which is a, a mid-season similar to Fuyu. So you've got an astringent, two non-astringents. Uh, I've got to get them to where they're producing better. It's not bad. I've eaten probably five or six off of this Fuyu this year already. I've seen these new nozzles at Home Depot. I've never really seen them in use. 
Well, these are the MP Rotator Series, and they put out about half the water of the normal one, uh, but it, it really does a good job of e even watering. And if you're out there walking around and it's just like a light, very light rain falling. Just a nest. And you're just running that about once a week right now. Right now, I don't even have it on timer. I just turn it on as needed. Oh, he's got a mango over here. Yes, yeah, so I'm trying to get this thing. Um, it's a pickering. It is a pickering, okay. So it's a, it's a, a natural dwarf. And I'm hoping that I can get the trunk up another three or four, about three or four inches. And I'm actually going to try it in ground with protection in the winter. Uh, I've heard that in Central Florida, people crop them back in the winter time, and then they come back in the spring and, and produce fruit. So nice. I want to give it a try. I love pushing the edge. We'll see what happens. Well, Charles, thank you so much for bring, letting us in your farm here and kind of showing us around your backyard food forest, we'll say. And I want to say you've done some great work here. I mean, to see bananas in North Florida, I mean, the diversity of citrus and grapes and persimmons, I mean, tropical palms, waterfall in the backyard. you got a lot of cool stuff growing on. Well, it's, it's all still a work in progress. And hopefully now that I'm retired, semi-retired, I'll be able to finish some of these projects. and. Uh, Remember that some of the best advice I can give you is the things that didn't work. Yeah. <laughs> so, a lot of things you try, they don't work, but don't give up. Just just keep trying, keep re research is key. I'm not belittling the nurseries or the big box stores or anything. Do your own research, get on the internet, look at university studies, and then try to find local contacts and talk to them and find out what works and what doesn't work. Because the people that's tried it, there's no need in you trying if it didn't work for them unless you can find some fault in the way they did things. So a lot of things, you know, you can learn from people's mistakes. Their success stories are great, but what didn't work is, is valuable information. I appreciate y'all coming out. Great advice. Thank you, Charles. All right, guys, that was awesome. Charles has got it going on here. Very cool site. I'm lucky I got in. I hope y'all enjoyed this quick tour of his backyard. So please like, subscribe, share, and don't forget the most important part. Pound it.